working it. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brenna, and this is my week 35 of pregnancy update. And I actually have a doctor's appointment, my first weekly doctor's appointment this morning in about an hour. So I have to, I was gonna, I'm going to still go to that and then give you an update after that. But first, I just wanted to go over a few of the symptoms I've had, even just the last few days. Um, I went on a run yesterday. I went five miles and I felt okay. I felt like I had a lot of pressure and um, I, don't, I, I think her head is just really far down, I guess. Um, and then again today, so this morning I just went two miles and I could bar or barely got to two miles. And then after that I took my dog for a walk. And the whole time I was walking, I felt like I had a lot of pressure, like I almost had to wobble. It was really uncomfortable. So I'm going to see what that's about. I don't, I don't think that's normal. I don't feel like I, for the next five weeks, or if it gets worse, um, I'm just going to see what to do if she's just, maybe if the doctor can check and see if she's just positioned really awkward. I don't know. Um, if I'm sitting, I'm fine. It's just when I'm walking, I I feel like I have to like. It, it feels like after a race when you're walking down steps or something, and you have to kind of wobble, and it's anyways. Um, so that's kind of that's the, I guess the biggest symptom. And besides that, the last few nights, probably the last four or five nights, I've been really restless trying to sleep. And I think part of it is excitement, but then a lot of it, the majority I think is that I'm really uncomfortable and I'm tired. So it should, I mean, I would think I'd be able to sleep through the night, but I'll even, I'll go to bed at 10 and then feel like I'm ready to get up at one or two and then just eventually end up getting up at four because I don't want to lay in bed anymore. But, um... That's why when they say try to catch up on your sleep before the baby gets here, I don't even know how you can do that. I feel like I'm already on her schedule. And another thing is she just kicks all night and she isn't as active sometimes during the day and I'll take a little cat nap, but I don't know how I'm going to get any sleep in the next five weeks anyways. So I guess I won't sleep for the next eight, whatever, 18 years. Um... So I weighed myself this morning already, and as you saw, I am up 168, so I'm up 3 pounds. I think, well, so that's normal, but that only gives me 2 more pounds until I stretched my goal weight up 5 pounds, you know, because before I had it at 25, so then I thought, well, I can do it to 30, but 35 is the absolute highest I can go. Well, I can go higher, but that's just what the doctor recommended. I think it was 168.4 or something this morning. Um, so that's another thing. But yeah, I'm really excited for my appointment today. Uh, I think today is when she starts checking my cervix to see if it's dilated at all. I highly doubt it would be at this point because I know some people can have it dilate three around three weeks before their due date, but I'm still five weeks out, so so we'll see. I mentioned in my update last week the perineal massage, but I didn't explain what it was, why my doctor recommended it. And the reason they recommend doing the perineal massage is because it's been proven to help you or to make you have less of a chance of having trauma or a tear and tears are so I mean a lot of people get tears first degree second degree third degree tears so it's not uncommon by any means I'm I'm just terrified to get a tear because I would like to start up running you know within the four weeks or so after she's here and I have a feeling if I have a tear it's going to be a lot more uncomfortable I actually talked to my little sister last week and she just had her baby about seven weeks ago, and she was telling me about her tear, and it just sounds awful. <laughs> I know it's just a normal part of having a baby, but if it, there's anything I can do to not have that happen to me, I will. Um, so with the perineal massage, I didn't realize that 
it was it would be so painful and so while I was having it done like I said you're gonna have to have someone else do it but while I was having it done it, it felt like with a natural childbirth that that's what it's gearing up for because it was so painful it's just you're laying there and it's just so awkward and so painful so I'm gonna keep doing it because like I said anything to help me not tear but I will let you guys know if it works if I tear then I will never ever do a perineal massage ever again but if it's worth it, then it's worth it. So I started to kind of, I guess, nest this weekend, and I made a huge list of things I need done and a honey to-do list for my husband. But I yesterday had planned on it, and I don't know if you didn't watch the vlog from yesterday, then you don't know, but if you did watch it, then you know. I planned on making a lot of freezer meals, but when all was said and done at the end of the day, I had no energy left. And so I kind of feel like that's how the next few weeks are going to go. And I should probably start my list early in the morning. I couldn't yesterday morning really because I had church and just some other things I wanted to get done. But I learned that lesson yesterday. Anyways, I probably should get headed to my appointment. So I will be back in a little while. Wish me luck. All right. So I just got back from my doctor's appointment and everything went great. Um, my blood pressure was a little higher than normal. It was 110 over 76. My fundus was measuring 35, so that's right on track. Uh, baby's heart rate was 130, which is actually really, or not really low, but lower than normal for her. She's normally in the 140s and low 140s, and so I just asked, you know, because I don't know if that's normal, and she said, yeah, the baby's probably just sleeping. So, um, so everything went great. I am dilated at one centimeter, and one concern though was I was telling my doctor about how I haven't been sleeping, and um, she basically said that I should take Benadryl around 2 a.m. since that's when I start to wake, or that's kind of the time I wake up, and then I'll lay there for a couple hours. Um, so she said to take Benadryl, and then my husband chimed in and said, well, That'll help with the itching too because I've been having like itching at night and I just assumed it's a normal pregnancy symptom. My it's not really even my stomach, it's more of just like behind my knees and my feet. And so I've been just putting on a lot more lotion, and but it's only at night that I itch. So she said I needed to have a blood, so I had a blood draw. Um, they're it's, what is it, the bile acid serum test is what they're testing. And basically, they're testing for coleostasis. And that's kind of what my symptoms were describing. Hopefully, I don't have it. Because if I do have it, then it's, uh, it's something you can only get in pregnancy, just like gestational diabetes, where it's just something that's during pregnancy. But if I do have it, then she was saying they'd have to induce me quite a bit earlier. Um, I'm not getting induced obviously right, right now, but just, she was just saying that they would have to induce me. And at first I was thinking, oh, yay, I get to meet her earlier. But I don't want to be induced. I wanted this whole, I mean, obviously things will go the way they will, but I was really excited, or I'm still really excited. Obviously I don't have the test, I won't have the test results for a couple days. But I... In my dream version, my water breaks, and then we go to the hospital, and then I go through a lot of pain, and then I have the baby, and then everything's great. Obviously, things don't go according to plan, probably hardly ever with birth, and I get that. But hopefully, I don't have it. We also talked about my, in the event that I don't have it, about my due date and... I was just asking about whether or not there's a way to estimate as far as how far in advance because my husband is on call the weekend before I'm due and so I was thinking if there's any way around it that we can have a better idea maybe and she was saying that she doesn't think I'll go past my due date just based on where the baby's at and with my cervix and everything so that's great news. I don't really want to be later than because 
yeah, I just don't want to, I am not a very patient person as it is. And there is nothing more exciting to me in the world than having my first baby. So anyways, that's besides the point. I just am getting really excited. So we had our second birth class on Wednesday and I really like the class, but I have a feeling I kind of annoy. So there's a couple in there that they're doing a home birth and it doesn't seem like they're really into it, but I am all about, you know, asking questions and we always get out at eight and we are supposed to go to, till 845. So I'm like, well, we still have time. So I, I might as well ask, you know, the questions we're paying to be here, but they always seem like they're a little annoyed when I talk, which is fine. As far as what we learned at class this week, um, we learned that in labor and natural delivery, it's all about distraction, concentration, and surrender. And that's at the end when you realize that you can't do anything to control your pain or the labor or whatever. Um, and then also, I had never heard this, but apparently, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard it, about when the baby goes, it starts to crown. It's called the ring of fire. So... That sounds, so that was a little, I don't know, a little crazy. Um, they also brought up stem cell banking. And if you, any of you have ever had um, any of your baby's stem cells banked, let me know down below. I haven't done a ton of research on it yet, but, well, it's something to look into. I still need to do that before Wednesday. And just to figure out the cost and everything. I guess they ask it now after every delivery. The hospital will ask if, some, if you're going to have your... They're the baby's stem cells um, banked. So they also talked about that you should consider bringing a cooler to the hospital because they have they have a lot of snacks there, but not necessarily ones that you want. And then if you want like Gatorade, they don't have Gatorade. They can give you water and juice, but basically to kind of pack your own snacks. And so I obviously already made up a list of snacks to bring. And I'll go through that in my hospital bag um, when I do that video. Everything's going swimmingly. I have I have a ton of stuff to do around the house. I have like literally a page and a half I made this weekend of just different things. So I need to get started on that. Oh, today, so since we've been kind of eating crappy lately, today is supposed to be the day that my husband and I start eating healthy till the baby's here or just in general. Um, he was saying that, well, I guess we've all been eating for two. So that's what we're doing. Hopefully I don't go too much over the weight that I don't want to gain, but I'm really getting to the point where I'm just, I'm going to throw the towel in. So for videos coming up this week, I'm going to still attempt my nesting series and that'll actually help because I have... Like I said, a ton of stuff to get done. And then also my hospital bag video. I'll do my hospital bag, the baby's hospital bag, and then my husband's. So I was going to do it later, but I kind of just want to get everything just ready to go. I, they're for the most part packed. I don't have my husband's done. And then I still need to fill the cooler. Obviously, a lot of that stuff will be last minute. So I'll do those. And then after that, it will be my... 36th week of pregnancy update. So I'll go ahead and show you my bump. And it's probably going to look a little bit bigger than, well, it'll look bigger anyways than last week, but we just ate. So anyways, that's it with the shirt. I love this shirt. I got it from Target. From the side. In the front, and back. All right, guys, thank you for watching my 35 week pregnancy update. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more videos or get more notifications about videos coming up, don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you later.